All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So uh, welcome everyone to uh, a Hull House, our virtual uh, trivia. We're very excited to uh, have people joining us um, to see who knows the most Hull House, Jane Addams, Chicago history, uh, tester knowledge. Uh, my name is Michael Ramirez. I'm the education manager here at the museum. Um, again, we're very excited to have you with us today for our final program of 2020. Uh, we know it's been a strange year, but we are so excited to be able to interact with um, you all, our audience, uh, in this new virtual platform that all of us have, I feel now, have grown very accustomed to. Um, so just some quick things uh, before we get started. As you are uh, joining the room, you will see the uh, way to join our trivia game on our screen. We also left the uh, info in the chat. You can go to uh, kahoot.it and then you'll enter our game pin 8654502. As you're joining, if you are not using your uh, name that is in our Zoom room chat, um, if you're using an alias, can you please um, put what alias you are using in the chat? We'll use that for verification purposes at the end for our winner, which our host Stefan and Audrey will uh, talk about in just a moment. Um, but again, very excited to have you all here with us today. And we just wanna remind you all that um, while the offices are going to be closed uh, after December 18th uh, as we go on our winter break. Hull House is virtually open 24-7. You can actually uh, view our 360 degree virtual tour on our website, hullhousemuseum.org, um, where you can explore um, more of the museum and some of the history that we'll not only be testing your knowledge on today, but also be talking about afterwards. Uh, we do also offer uh, educator-led virtual tours. And the uh, last day to schedule one of these tours, if you are a uh, school group or know somebody who um, is an educator, or maybe if you, your friends and family want to schedule a tour with us, the last day for uh, all of our virtual tours will be December 18th. Um, so you can, again, find more information on that on our website, hullhousemuseum.org, which we'll drop in the chat. Um, but at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our two hosts for the day, Stefan Caisaguano and Audrey Catalano, um, and they will be going over the rules for our trivia day um, and also the uh, great prizes that we'll have for our top three winners. So Stefan, Audrey, take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Audrey. That's Stefan. Oh, that's me. I don't, oh, you pointed up, but I'm, I'm like below you. I'm Stefan, I'm the other co-host here. And we were really excited to have everyone here today. We put a lot of love into to lo developing these questions. We were trying to find ones that were a little easy and then others that would stump folks, maybe some trick questions along the way, but you're definitely gonna use your brain today. Um, so Kahoot is used on like many different kind of uh, uh, spaces, educational spaces you know, business meetings, and we're using it as sort of a way to educate, but also have fun at the same time. Um, Audrey, you want to explain how it works a little bit? For sure. Um, so we'll see a little bit more in our first question, uh, but you, uh, you'll you use your phone or your tablet device to pick uh, the color and shape um, with the answer that you think is the correct answer to the trivia question. And with uh, the faster you answer, the more points you get. Um, again, we'll talk a little bit through this with the first question. It's pretty intuitive. Um, but before we do that, let's announce our prizes, right? Um, so second and third place prizes, we'll see a, a scoreboard at the end of the Kahoot game. And our second and third place winners will get a collection of postcards and bookmarks from the Hull House gift shop. Um, and the first prize winner will uh, be mailed a nationalities map of the Hull House maps and papers. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's like, yay big. I know that means nothing virtually in a Zoom room, um, but it's a really beautiful map. I want to own it. Um, and you'll also be receiving uh, a maps and papers book. Um, so this is the book of essays that 
accompanies the Maps and Papers project, uh, which we might learn a little bit more about in our Kahoot game. Who we knows? Know. We definitely um, Yeah, in the first place, winner will also get that collection of bookmarks and postcards as well. Um, so if there aren't any questions, I think we should get started, right? Mm -hmm. I'm joining along just to like help navigate folks uh, on like questions, because some of them might be just like a multiple choice, but other uh, you have to like put in order based on like what year sometimes you have to like input something so i'll be guiding everyone so i will not be playing otherwise i would win um, <laughs> and last thing i'll say is uh after we go through all of the trivia questions we'll go back through them and offer a little bit more information and context about each question um, and take your questions as well we'll open up the floor the zoom chat rather um, as well as those joining us from from facebook so let's get started um Here we uh, go. Folks who are joining, you can join it at any time. The Kahoot pin is at the bottom of the screen. Um, so you can join it at any time. Just know that you won't get the points from like the questions that you've missed. So the first one, um, what it's a pretty, pretty, I guess, easy for some folks, maybe not the others. Uh, what year was the Hull House Mansion built? And so Audrey and I are holding up our phones. So the color, uh, the shape and color corresponds to the answer. So the red triangle would represent the answer 1889. The yellow circle would represent 1856. Uh, the blue diamond would represent 1860 and the green square would represent 2012. And so you can click one of the answers, the ones that you think is right. And uh, it'll tell you the right answer at the end. Um, so that's pretty much that's pretty much it. It's 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 a it's a little difficult to navigate at first, but once you get into it, you really get into it. So it's gonna be a good time. Mm -hmm. We've got six. So you've got ready. Ten more seconds. Ten more Lock seconds. in your answers. You know what I realized that like people are probably joining in from like the Facebook pin that they see, and mm -hmm. not like an actual Zoom meeting. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. All right. So three people got it right. Others um, picked a different answers. We're off to a good start. We're off to a good start. Yeah. And we'll explain a little bit more about why some people may have chosen, uh, right? Like three people chose 1889. Uh, one person chose 1860. One person chose 2012. We'll explain a little bit more about why you may have thought those were the answers. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, let's move on to our second question. And right now, Kimberly, Kimberly in first place. Good for you. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we'll have a little check-in of the scoreboard after each question so you can see how you're, how you're comparing to your fellow players. So question two, what year was the Hull House Settlement founded? Was so, it 1856, 1889, 1860, or 1910? So yes, it's the same, it's the same, uh, it's essentially. So see the answers as they roll in. Two answers, three answers, or five six so last question was what year was the mansion built this one what year was it founded just to distinguish if that gives you any clues all right three people got it right at 1889 nice job everybody let's take a look at the scoreboard now oh oh asino asino one one uh, yeah, and remember, uh, you can get more points by answering quickly. Um, so that's also a, a part of the Kahoot. Okay, Steph is coming up on number two. Who founded Hull House? Who did it? Was it Jane Addams and Ellen Gate Starr, Helen Culver and Charles Hull, Jane Addams and Charles Hull, or Jane Addams and Mary Rose Smith? This could be a trick question just because of the name itself. Yeah. 15 seconds, lock in your answers. Oh, do you think we could put the music up a little bit? Just a tiny bit. I think it yeah. adds to the ambiance, if you will. Yeah, let me see. Oh, here we go. You hear anything? Yeah, but it's it's not it's not like playing anything because it's not putting music right now because we just oh did. okay you great know, so four like people that got that right uh, yeah it was Jane Adams and Ellen Gate Star two people thought it was Jane and Charles Hull we'll talk about him in a second mm -hmm. all right sweet yeah, that's confusing because it's a Jane Adams Hull house yeah right exactly mm -hmm. and see your one 
<laughs> has a streak, right? And they'll also show you who's been a who's been Ooh. on a roll. Three um, correct answers in a row. Okay. Yeah. And just, I see that a couple more people are coming in. Um, so just as a reminder, you can join the Kahoot game at kahoot.it. Uh, and the game pin is 8654502. And you, uh, on your device, you can choose the answer you think it is. You get more points uh, the quicker you answer. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So you can join in at any time. So that's really mm -hmm. cool. You just got to catch up to the to the folks who've already been playing three questions. So. Yeah, to Asinio one with mm -hmm. 409. We see you, we see you. All right, next. When was the Great Chicago Fire? You may recognize this <laughs> picture. This is not the Great Chicago Fire, uh, but we just wanted to have a little fun. But the cast. Uh, the, the cast show. of the, the titular show. <laughs> A good volume for everyone yes all right most people got it right nice 1871 nice it says i'm in seventh place <laughs> well that's i think that's only fair that you I, don't i think so <laughs> um great yeah 1871 two people thought it was 1901 honestly it's kind of a hard piece of trivia to know i don't know how many people just know that off the top of their head I only know it because of this job, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I've seen you one uh, in first place. They've got the highest uh, answer streak of four. Um, and then Steph is in number two spot and Avalon one is in number three. Okay, people studied people. Yeah, I know. Some people will probably put in some work this week. Mm -hmm. here. All right, let's move on to our next question. What was the first program started at Hope House? Was it the kindergarten, the hospital, the church, or a homeless shelter? Got four answers so far. That is scary. Okay. I know this music is intense. Mm -hmm. Meant for Little bit of time left. Two seconds. Lock in your answers. Yes. Nice. It was the kindergarten. Two people thought it might have been the hospital, uh, but no one was stumped and thought it was the church. But three people thought it was a homeless shelter. That's a really popular misconception that we get in the museum too. And we'll talk a little bit about that after the trivia game. There's going to be so much information afterwards. It's going yeah. to be All right. I seen you one still has the highest answer streak of five. Can five. anyone catch them? Mm -mm. Yeah, but like if we can keep it at the scoreboard for a bit, just for people who are um, who haven't caught up yet. Mm -hmm. Again, go to kahoot.it. Um, and the, like I believe it's the right hand corner where it says play. You click that button and then you enter the game pin, which is eight six five four five zero two. Mm -hmm. So if anyone wants to join in, they definitely can. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm in 10th place uh, because I've been, I'm signed in, but uh, I haven't been playing. I'm doing so. better than you because I have. You're doing better than me? I'm doing better than you. I'm in seventh place. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, to make it onto the scoreboard, you've got to be in the top five. So shout right. out to you, Aquatic Hen 43. I love that username. Kimberly Chi, Avalon One, Steph, and of course, Asino One. Asino. I'm probably saying it incorrectly, but. All right, should we move on now? Yes. I think All right, next question. <laughs> They're gonna get a little bit more difficult. How many buildings did Hull House grow to? Was it one, 12, 13, or 16? Get those answers locked in. Two answers, three answers. About 15 seconds left. What could it be? split here between uh 12 and 13 
but shout out to those two people who got it right. It was 13 buildings. It's a hard question. It's a really yeah. hard question. You don't really think about like, oh my God, there were more than one building. There was more than one building. Yeah, especially because it kept changing over the course of like 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. This is the, the highest number it got to, but uh, for many of those years beforehand, it was constantly fluctuating. Mm -hmm. Jane Adams, she stayed busy, you know? She really did. Uh, all right, let's see, scoreboard. Still, everyone is in there. Everyone in the top five is pretty solidly in their position right now, but that could change. It's early in the game. We're only on question six out of 20. So stay tuned. Um, let's move on. Who called Jane Addams the most dangerous woman in America in the 1920s? Was it the FBI, John H. Adams, Wardrow Wilson, or Daughters of the American Revolution. This, this awesome. is a kind of tricky one. Is this music okay? The level? I think so. All right, three seconds. Ooh. I, that makes sense, right? That people thought it would have been Wardrow Wilson. But it was actually the DAR, the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, they actually kicked Jane Addams out. Uh, and a little bit more on that later. But let's see how this affected. Ooh, Aquatic Hen, 43, moved up to third place. Ooh, right? It's getting hot. The competition is here. <laughs> I think the music yeah. really played a role into it. <laughs> yeah. Um, right? So. Things can change really quickly in Kahoot land. Um, all right, let's move on. Who did Jane Adams? Who did Jane Adams have to share her Nobel Peace Prize with? Nicholas Murray Butler, W. E. B. Du Bois, Albert Einstein, or Marie Curie? This one's tricky. This one is. I I think this would stump me if I. I, I, I think this. Yeah, I wasn't an educator here. <laughs> yeah, right? Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Oh, one person got it right. That's cool. Three people thought it was W.E.B. Du Bois. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We're trying to stump you. We didn't come to play. Not no today. Mm -mm. No, no games at this game. No. <laughs> All right, that was question eight. Let's move on. See if the scoreboard changed anything. No, I was not right. Wow. Really on a roll. Mm -hmm. 5580. That but is But they did lose their streak. They did lose their streak. That's mm -hmm. right. So yeah. All right, let's move on. Who was Jane Adams married to? Was it George Edelman? Mary Rose Smith? Ellen Gates star or no one? This one's tough. Six answers, 15 seconds left. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Wow! Oh, Apparently this was not as tricky as we thought. Five people got it right. That's right. She never married. We thought we were being slick and, <laughs> and smart. Wow. Nice. Okay. Oh, I'm in eighth place now. I'm in 11th place now. <laughs> it's hard at the bottom, you know? <laughs> yeah. Did this change anyone's score? No, I think everyone stayed the same. All I right. think everyone like all right quit trying to trick us <laughs> <laughs> all right we're about halfway through so don't lose hope you can still you know come from behind right okay. okay what year did jane adams die was it 1931 1935 or 
person got it right. Everyone thought it was 1931. Yeah, that was actually the year that she won her Nobel Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. So you might have that date circulating in your mind if you were studying, right? Came, mm -hmm. came to play. You're like, I'm going to win that book. I'm yeah, gonna... right? <laughs> All right, y'all. Still 10 questions left. Mm -hmm. Question 11. Which artist created the exhibit Into Body, Into Wall, which contained a curtain replica of the... Was it... These are all collaborators. Um, so really, this these are a little more uh, intricate, but I'm great, especially the contemporary one. This one was about Ooh, three of the bright, but yeah, Gaspar. Wow, nice. All right. Yeah. And like, like Stefan said, all three of those uh, other options are also Hull House collaborators. So we were trying to trick you. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of people persisted. Okay. Steph has the highest streak of three. We have a new streak leader. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Stefan, I'm getting word that we can't really hear you over the music. So I'm just oh, okay. going to, I'm going to turn the music off during your, uh, during your reading. Who Is was the up? head resident of Hull House immediately after Jane Addams' death? Was it Adina Miller Rich, Charlotte Carr, Russell Ballard, or Ellen Gates Starr? This is a hard one. Mm -hmm. They're getting tougher, y'all. They're getting tougher mostly because three of these people were actually head residents after Jane Addams, but we don't know who was the new well, I know, and Audrey knows, <laughs> and you know. Who was immediately the head resident after Jane Addams' death? And one of them was the resident. Adina Miller Ridge. Yes, two people got it right. That one was a hard hey. one. That one was a difficult one. It was pretty hard. Mm -hmm. They're only going to get harder from here, folks. <gasps> we have, we a, have a new number one. It's Steph. Steph. Nice. Wow. Things are things are moving and shaking over here. Things are shifting quickly. I am at the edge of my seat. <laughs> Whole house programs in chronological order by the year they were established. So this one you're gonna have to move around. You're gonna have to click which one again the answer coordinates with um, with the answer on the screen, and you have to click uh, which one first. So if you think maybe immigrant protective leave is first, you click that first, and then the next one, and so on and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So you drag this. We give you a little extra time for this one because it's more involved. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, it, it's getting hard now. Because you not only have to pick up one right answer, you have to pick up four, all four exactly. of them. Exactly. But we gave you an answer with uh, one of the questions in the previous one. So. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is if you really know your stuff. The music's really scary. I know it is. It's very ominous. And, and then, then press the oh, K button. Yes, there yeah, exactly. Oh, but who got it right? That's so Ooh, 29% got it right. Wow. I wonder how many people that is. Right, okay. So that's the correct order. That was hard. That was a really hard one. Oh, Avalon. Taking Aquatic Hen 43's spot and number three, keeping this, it interesting. This game is cutthroat. No <laughs> friends. No friends. No. Mm -mm. No. Okay, the next question. Hull House is part of and located on the University of Illinois Chicago's campus. Where was UIC originally located at? Was it Hyde Park, Schaumburg, Navy Pier, or The Loop? There's three of these places that are located in Chicago. The other one isn't. Um, we've got 15 seconds left. And this is what you guys can see this looks like. A little architect style. And we're actually right behind the, we're obviously hover over the building. 
Oh yeah, this is us, right? No. no. Ah, too late. <laughs> Somebody got it right. One person got it right. One person. Most people got this wrong though. Yeah, this isn't really common knowledge. Um, at least it wasn't to me, but I'm not, I'm a Chicago transplant. So I have no business. Ooh. Oh. It's a close game, mm-hmm. especially at that number one spot. Mm-hmm. It's Ooh. getting close. And we're almost, we're, on, we're almost done. We're almost, we're almost done. done. We've got five questions left, everyone. Which artist created the official unofficial voting station voted f- voting for all who legally can't? at our museum in 2016. We have uh, Nicole Mariquin, Ida B. Wells, Regent and Gloria, and I'm Han Subhantes. Three of these people are also collaborating artists uh, with the Hull House, who we program with them regularly, uh, and one of these other people. <laughs> I'm sure you can guess which one it is. <laughs> we have 10 seconds left. And again, we'll talk a little bit about all of these questions and why they would be possible answers. Um, at the end. Only one got it right, Ana Ponce Puentes. Yep, that was the correct answer. That's right. Mm-hmm. Oof. Oh, man. Steph is catching up. Steph is catching up. Watch your seat as no one. <laughs> it's, it's scary at the top, you know. Which Hull House reformer was known for her sweatshop factory investigations and is a pioneer in t- industrial toxicology? Yeah. So Ellen Gates Starr, Alice Hamilton, Florence Kelly, or Charlotte Carr. And make sure you read the full question on this one. Mm-hmm. A, little, a little tricky here. A little tricky. Mm-hmm. We really did try to catch you all slipping. <laughs> all right, eight answers in. I have a question. Does anyone watching Facebook, do we have any questions? coming from there. Yeah, you can also put any questions you have in the chat. And if we don't get to them now, we'll get to them uh, after after we hit question 20. Mm-hmm. It's Five gonna... seconds to lock in your answer. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see who got it right. Ooh, one person got it right. It was Alice Hamilton. Florence Kelly, oh, I, w- I would have assumed it was Florence Kelly too, but it's that last part. It's that last part you really gotta. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But one person could not be stumped. Mm, I wonder who it was. Let me see who's pointing. <gasps> oh! Wow. What major Chicago event took place at the same time as the 1893 Hull House Maps and Papers investigation? Was it the Chicago Fire, the World's Columbian Exposition, the First Taste of Chicago, or the Haymarket Massacre? Lock in those answers and we'll see who got it right. It's a very close game, very close game for first prize. Mm-hmm. Five seconds left. Oh, man. Oh. Yes, three people got it right. It was the World's Columbian Exposition, 1893. Mm-hmm. It was only a couple years before the Hayma- Haymarket Massacre. So mm-hmm. we get why three people thought it was that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. Okay. 10.43, moving into that number three slot. But Steph has a streak with three correct answers in a row. Good job, Steph. We are cutthroat. They're only here for one thing. Those bookmarks. Those. <laughs> so this is a type-in question. Yes, this is a portrait hung up in Jane Addams' bedroom. Who is the portrait of? So then you type in your answer here. Yes, as Audrey was saying. And then you press submit when you're ready. If anyone's been to the museum, it's one of the uh, the pieces that catches your eye first. Mm-hmm. So like you walk Three in. seconds left. Mm-hmm. Ooh, let's, let's see, see what people, people answered. Ellen Gates star, lover, girlfriend, her partner. 
Mary Leslie Smith, her best friend. Mary Leslie Smith, her partner, girlfriend. Nice. One person got it right. One per. Oh no. Oh, oh man. I thought that all those people had had guessed these, but these were all the acceptable answers, right? Mm -hmm. Her yes, partner, so her girlfriend. Her, yes. So uh, her partner, her girlfriend, or another spelling of Mary Leslie Smith were the other possible and acceptable answers uh, of this question. But the real answer is Mary Rose Smith. Yeah. And we'll we'll talk a little bit more about uh, about her and Jane Addams in just two questions from now is when we'll start to so exciting. Oof, that number one spot is changing every time. There's two more questions left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well let's battle it out. Another type answer. Yes, finish this quote by Jane Adams. True peace is not merely the absence of war. It is the presence of blank. So type in your answer in the box and then hit submit. I feel like the music isn't playing, but it's still playing in my heart and in my head. Oh, here we go. Let's. Oh my God. That's not the one I was Yeah, Kahoot has all of these different music uh, genres that you can choose from. I think this is like thriller. <laughs> There's a Prince of Hall House, Tension, Freedom, Justice. You people got it right. Nice. Tension is actually another another quote, but we'll we'll get to that one. We'll get yeah. in the next piece. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. One more oh, question. Right. Right. Oh, Here it is, y'all. Final question. It could be make or break. It could be. Ready? Next question. Who is hosting <laughs> this trivia game? Eddie Chong, and Nadia Maraga. Michael Ramirez, Ross Jordan, Audrey Catalano, Juan Carlos Casimano, Mr. Palafax, and who could it be? Yeah, and remember, quickness of your answer gives you points too. So. It does, it does, it does. Three, two, one. Nice. Four people got it right. Oh, thank you, everyone. It's us. It's me and Stefan. <laughs> paying attention or going back on Zoom and looking and hovering over our names. Yeah. Oh, Here's the podium. Aquatic Hand is in third. Aquatic Hand 43. Nice job. Steph is in second. Good job, yes. Asenia One. Mm hmm. Avalon. Awesome. Two. Kimberly Shy. Five. But we all won because we all had a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you are uh, Aquatic Hen 43, Steph, or Asinio 1, would you please uh, put your names in the chat so that we can contact you about getting your prizes to you? Nice job. Wow. Congrats. Yes. Um, all right. Well, I think we're going to start the discussion portion. And I know we started a little late, so we're gonna go a little past uh, a little past one. Um, yeah, Steph Asinia one and Aquatic Hen forty three. Please just put your names in the chat, um, and we'll we'll contact you about getting those prizes to you. Mm -hmm. But for now, let's talk a little bit about the questions. What we just saw. Okay. Yeah. Let me just pull up are handy. Aquatic Hen, Amber Schmidt. Yeah, nice job, y'all. Oh, sorry, just getting this all configured. I hope y'all had fun. This was the first time we've ever tried using Kahoot. Mm -hmm. um, we want to do it again. This was really yeah, we do. I really liked making the questions. Um, I like seeing people stumped, and I like seeing people succeed. <laughs> really fun. All right, can you see my screen with the PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. I can. Awesome. All right, let's make this full screen. All righty. Good times. Good vibes. Okay, so this first question, what year was the Hull House Mansion built? 
It was 1856. Um, 1856 is when this whole is when the whole mansion was constructed. Um, it was built by a wealthy real estate developer named Charles Hull. And he had this home built as kind of a summer getaway home uh, because this house was outside of uh, Chicago city limits at that time. Um, it's on the original foundation where it still is today. Um, and of course, now it's the, the mansion is the museum that, uh, that you can come visit hopefully soon. But right now you can come visit virtually. And we'll talk a little bit more about virtual tours at the end and get you all situated. Um, in there though, just so people know it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is uh, the painting um, that we have hanging in the museum, but it's got the answer, right? In the, in the corner, it has built 1856. Um, so we couldn't show it to you because what's the fun in that, right? All right, question two, what year was the Hull House Settlement founded? Those are the That's confusing questions. Exactly, right? So the mansion was built in 1856, but the settlement was founded in 1889. Um, and this is actually when Jane Addams and Ellen Gates Starr read Charles Hull's obituary in the paper, um, and they had been wanting to start a settlement house uh, after visiting the first of its kind on the east end of London in, at Toynbee Hall. So they brought back this idea, they found this abandoned mansion and Helen Culver, who is the cousin of Charles Hull, let them use the space rent free for about 25 years. Eventually she became a whole house trustee. So mm -hmm. thanks she Helen Culver. <laughs> yes, she let them use them under the condition that they would, uh, that they would use the Hull name, which is why right. Jane Adams Hull House. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so 1889. And this is just a photo of it on the um, Polk in Halstead, right? Mm -hmm. Halstead, yeah. is that the? Yes. Yeah. Haven't I been there in so long, I, I forget. <laughs> Polk is like, a, because the university is right there, it's there, but it's just a tiny strip. Mm -hmm. um, and it's intersected with like a parking lot and also a student center. Mm -hmm. And you can't really see it, but the mansion is in between these two massive buildings. It's set back a little bit from Halstead, but it's right there and it still is there today. All right, who founded Hull House? Trick question, right? Of course, it's Jane Addams. That's what most people think of, um, but she had a co-founder. It was Ellen Gates Starr. Um, Ellen Gates Starr and Jane Addams actually met at Rockford Female Seminary where they both went to college. And then the two of them went on that European tour found Toynbee Hall and brought the model back to their home state of Illinois. Um, and Charles Hull, of course, being the philanthropist that had the mansion built, Helen Culver being, oops, Helen Culver being, uh, uh, ah, sorry, my screen is going a little crazy. Um, Helen Culver being the cousin, right? You've got this. Why am I having such trouble? Mm -hmm. Maybe ah! going back in. Yeah, I'm gonna go back in. I don't know. My Mac is sometimes a little temperamental. If you want, all right, I've got it. I've got it. I'm going. I'm coming back. All right, everybody loves a comeback. <laughs> Share screen. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right, third question, right? Nope, I guess it won't let me. All right, but that's Ellen Gates Starr, right? The Hull House uh, co-founder. Um, this is a portrait of her, or a photo of her. She was always wearing purple. That was like her sing signature color. She was always wearing furs and pretty extravagant clothing, apparently. So she was really cool. This next question, what was the first program started at Hull House? It was the kindergarten. Um, and the kindergarten opened about a month after Hull House itself opened its doors in 1889. And within three weeks, there were about 70 children on the wait list. Um, some people thought it was a church. There was actually no place of worship ever on Hull House's campus. It was pretty intentional. Jane Addams and Ellen Gates Starr wanted it to be a secular place. There was never a hospital, which would have been pretty helpful. Um, to my knowledge, all of the doctors who were 
residents at Hull House, right, like living and working there, uh, may have seen patients like in their quarters, right, like in their uh, in their apartments or visited patients in their homes. That was a little bit more common. And some people think that Hull House was a homeless shelter, um, but that's not true, right? So the only people who lived at Hull House um, were college educated men and women, usually from wealthy backgrounds who came to live and work at Hull House. Um, so the only, those were the only people who were living there. They were called residents. The people in the community uh, were called neighbors. Mm -hmm. But if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Yeah. Other educators who are monitoring the chat will answer. For sure. But this is just a little photo of Jane Adams with some children, right? Um, it was, childcare was really sorely needed in the 19th ward and that's why the kindergarten was the first program of all, right? When was the Chicago fire? Not this Chicago fire, but the other one, it's 1871. Um, we've got some other dates in there. You'll notice 1893 shows up later in a future question, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. Stefan, what did, I know you have a little uh, factoid about the Great Chicago Fire and where it started, right? And yeah, it started about a few blocks away from the Hall House itself, actually, where the Fire Academy is now located. So I think that's pretty cool that it survived despite it being so close to the actual fire or like the origin of the actual fire. So that's really interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a photo from the library, or drawing <laughs> an etching rather uh from the library of congress so if you want to look up more they're there library of congress. Mm -hmm. how many buildings did hall house grow to one four 13 or eight and it was 13. this photo was a little bit of a hint right it wasn't one um it grew to 13 buildings over the course of a little less than 20 years and of course now only two of those buildings are standing uh, which is the original Hall Mansion, which is now the museum, and the residence dining hall right next door. Mm -hmm. it, 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 I feel like people would have gotten one, mostly because it's just the Hall House, not the Hall Houses. Right. Uh, <laughs> and so, it, yeah, it grew pretty quickly for what mm -hmm. it was at the time. So, and that's really Yeah. Cool. And fun facts that we didn't mention here, um, Frank Lloyd Wright really wanted to design the other buildings of Hull House, but Jane Addams would not let him. Uh, she wanted to stick with uh, Alan and Irving Pond, who are the two brothers um, who designed the rest of the, the settlement. And also yeah. helped uh, find the house itself. Like, I believe yeah. it was Alan Pond that was very close friends with Jane Addams and was helping her look for mansions for like what she wanted to do, the settlement house. So she's mm -hmm. like, no, my friends are gonna design it because they've been here with me since the beginning. Exactly. Next one, this is one of my favorite questions. Who called Jane Addams the most dangerous woman in America in the 1920s? Um, lots of people thought it was the FBI or Wardrow Wilson, right? But it was the daughters of the American Revolution. Um, Jane Addams was pretty controversial. Right? She was having a lot of radical thinkers and speakers coming through Hull House. Um, but the Daughters of the American Revolution specifically uh, thought she was a little too dangerous uh, for their organization. But many people might have thought this was the FBI because we have her FBI file in the museum, right? Or just a portion of it, I believe. It's all public domain. You can go on the FBI website and look through Jane Addams's own file. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna link it. I'm gonna link it because yeah. It's an interesting it's pretty neat, right? It's just it kind of shows the lengths of surveillance um that trailed Jane Addams for for much of her life. Um who she was seeing, where she was going, right? She was traveling pretty pretty extensively by the end of her life, giving lectures everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just one side of that surveillance and, and controversy, really. I just want to pause and see if we have any questions. I'm not seeing any. Oh, I see Lori says, love the photo of Miss Adams and children. Yeah, she she's photographed a lot with children, um, which is funny because, you know, 
She never had any of her own, but they were always seemingly around. And that's actually one of the, the ghost stories of her, you know, ghost, maybe not stories, but narratives is that you can hear children running up and down the stairs at Hull House, um, which just, you know, goes to show they were really always there. <laughs> I think she really loved children, even if she yeah. didn't have her own. I think that's why she didn't have her own, because she had so many other children in the neighborhood. She's like, these are my children. Yeah, yeah. right? Like, these are these are them. These are mine. Mm -hmm. um, who did Jane Addams have to share her Nobel Peace Prize with? This was a tricky one. Uh, the answer, of course, is Nicholas Murray Butler. Marie Curie was the first woman to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. Jane Addams was the first American woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize in 1931. And she had to share it with this guy, Nicholas Murray Butler, who was a philanthropist. Um, I would be pretty upset if I won the Nobel Peace Prize and I had to share it with someone, but I think this was pretty standard uh, for the time. People would, they would choose a couple people uh, at the same time to share the prize. And that's a replica of the Nobel Peace Prize that we have in the museum. Um, it is, the, the original is in, um, is at Swarthmore on the East Coast. So it's a replica, but still pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Am I taking over? Is this? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, cool. Uh, who was Jane Addams married to? Now this was, this could have been a trick question. We thought it was a trick question. Right, but it seemed like most of you knew the answer to this. George Hadlin, Mary Jose Smith, Ellen Gates Starr, or no one. Jane Addams was not married to anyone. Um, her partner, her domestic life partner was Ellen Gates Starr. George Adel Hadleman was actually her stepbrother who proposed to her and she said no. I, I think the main reason as to why she said no was because it was her stepbrother, but <laughs> um, that's just a little tidbit about that. And there's a picture of Jane Addams and Mary Rose Smith. Uh, they spent most of their time together. Uh, they lived together. They were actually even thinking about adopting a child with one another. So they were very close. So if anyone was like married to Jane Addams, it probably would have been Mary Rose Smith. Mm -hmm. What year did Jane Addams die? 1931, 1935, 1934, 1977. The answer was 1935. A lot of you picked 1931, which we probably assumed you were mixing it up with when Jane Addams won her Nobel Peace Prize. Um, and that was the year, 1931. But Jane Addams actually passed away in 1935. She was 74 years old and she had actually passed away from cancer. Um, 1934 is when Mary Rose Smith died. So they actually passed a year, uh, passed away a year uh, apart from one another. Yeah, and they had a, a viewing in the courtyard, right? Which is what this photo is. Mm -hmm. It was thousands of people showed up, thousands, thousands of people showed up to, to pay their respects to Jane Addams. Mm -hmm. And this building in this photo, this is uh, the residence dining hall, which is still up today. It's one of the two buildings that was preserved. Who was the head resident of Hull House immediately after Jane Addams' death? Um, Adina Miller Rich. So two of you actually got this right. So that was really cool. Uh, Adina Miller Rich, Charlotte Carr, and Russell Ballard were all head residents of Hull House, but uh, Adina Miller Rich was the one who immediately was appointed after Jane Addams had passed away. Ellen Gates Starr was a co-founder. Adina Miller Rich uh, was actually part of the Hull House board, and then when Jane Addams passed away, she immediately was uh, put onto that. She actually played a role in the Immigrant Protective League, which uh, helped immigrants want to assimilate to the United States. But when the Great Depression rolled around, uh, it helped immigrants who were facing deportation because of the Great Depression. Um, if you wanna learn a little bit about that, I actually talk a lot about that uh, during our virtual tours. Um, so if, if that's something you're interested in, definitely feel free to book one of those. Um, but, yeah, she would help immigrants, specifically Mexican immigrants would actually go to their houses and teach them how to read in English. Uh, but she was deemed a little too radical by the board and was actually uh, sort of booted out from being head resident and Charlotte Carr took over. Mm -hmm. um, and not a question, but a comment from Lori in the Zoom chat. Um, my neighbor, Francis Molinaro lived at Hull House for 46 years. That's so that's such a long time to live anywhere. Wow. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's so cool. We love hearing um right those local stories of, oh. of Hull House history. 
I miss it when people would come in and be like, yeah, my grandmother took a class here. And I'm like, that's so cool. Like, I know, right? I'm, Living history, seriously. Very I, cool, Lori, thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. All right, put these whole house programs in chronological order by the year they was a step where they were established. So the first answer uh, was kind of given to you saying like, which one was the first program? It was the kindergarten. So that was the first answer. The next one is the labor museum. The labor museum was a cultural program established by Hull House uh, sort of as a way to uh, uh, sort of like replicate workplaces uh, in a safe and humane way uh, as an alternative to the sweatshops and the factories. And that was established in 1901. The Immigrant Protective League, I just sort of spoke about it a little bit, but it's writing legal services and help for people who are at risk of being deported in the Hull House community. And then the Hull House Kilns was another cultural program established in 1927 that was specifically made for ceramics and pottery and people could sell them specifically for Mexican immigrants. So there on the right, we have Jesus Torres, an undocumented immigrant from Silao, Mexico, and he benefited a lot from this. He actually got a lot of like fame uh, from uh, his pottery work and his ceramic work at Hull House, and he sort of branched out from there. Um, and then on the left, I don't know, I don't think the name was mentioned, but it's someone who's sort of presenting Syrian spinning, and that was pretty common. The Labor Museum be like, Russian spinning, Irish spinning, Syrian spinning. Uh, even though they were considered spinning, they were doing it in different methods because it, based on tradition and heritage. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, definitely one of my favorite parts of Hull House history are these two programs. All right, where is the University of Illinois Chicago UIC campus originally located? Uh, one of the answers is Hyde Park, a historical neighborhood on the south side, Schomburg a suburb <laughs> uh, from where uh, one of our educators is from, uh, Navy Pier, a uh, big tourist attraction, um, and originally a naval base, which is why it gets the name Navy Pier. Um, and that was the original location of where um, the Hull House, or not the Hull House, the University of Illinois Chicago was located. And then they were running out of room and they're like, we need to move the university somewhere else. And they thought of the um, Harrison Halstead location, and that's where it is today. That's where you'd see it today. And now we are part of the university. We're actually part of the College of Architect and Art Design. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah. All right. Which artist created the exhibit Into Body, Into Wall, which contained a curtain replica of the Cook County Jail? I actually have a really personal connection with this exhibit and uh, what it entails in general. Uh, so the person, so all, uh, as we said earlier, all of the people who are mentioned in the answers are all collaborating artists who have uh, participated in the programming uh, and ex uh, exhibitions of Hull House, but Maria Gaspar uh, had a massive role in this one. She created this one. Um, and so it was a really beautiful and really uh, deep piece about like uh, what jails and prisons have to do uh, in playing a role in communities. Um, so the Cook County Jail, is actually one of the largest metropolitan jails in the entire United States. And it is located in a predominantly immigrant brown neighborhood. So sort of seeing what that represents uh, and also just like the statistics of like, what does it mean it being in a brown neighborhood when most of the people who are incarcerated in that jail are black and brown people. And at the time they were there for nonviolent crimes, specifically possession of marijuana. Um, and so there was a lot of, it was a lot of uh, talking about like, what do jails represent? How do the communities feel about them and how do they impact communities? Um, and so the curtain that you see there is actually the Cook County Jail wall, uh, but it's, it's a lot bigger. I actually live in the community and when I would go to work, I would pass it every day. So you, you would see that every day. Uh, but again, I'm getting off topic. I'm very passionate about this exhibit. It's a really good exhibit. Mm -hmm. All right. Which Hull House reformer was known for her sweatshop factory investigations and is a pioneer in industrial toxicology? I, I feel like I always say it wrong. Did, did I say it right? Industrial toxicology. Yeah, you got it. Right, right. I feel like I always say it wrong. <laughs> um, so Ellen Gates star, Alice Hamilton, Florence Kelly, and Charlotte Carr. Alice Hamilton was the answer, but we understand why you might have said Florence Kelly. Florence Kelly was also known for her investigations when it came to sweatshop and factories and the conditions, but she did it more on like a legal basis. She was an attorney um, and she was sort of fighting for like regulation and laws and acts. Alice Hamilton was sort of seeing the science of it. She's like, there's lead in this, there's poisonous fumes in this, this is dangerous. Um, 
so Alice Hamilton was sort of that. And so um, the key clue in there was industrial toxicology. So right. that, that yeah. went to a few people. Yeah, Alice Hamilton actually um, did work to uh, uncover that the lead in the glazes that they were using in the Hull House kilns were poisonous. So it was the orange reddish glaze. And she was like, wait, stop, this is dangerous. This is toxic. So, And Hull House actually became known for that glaze. Yeah, right, exactly. Lead is actually not that great for you. <laughs> Turns out. Yeah, and this is just a little um, vitrine that we have of Alice Hamilton in the museum. Um, and one thing I love is this little letter from Albert Einstein. Um, it's a very specific letter that he's writing to her about um, an article that she had published in a newspaper, but she was drawing recognition internationally, right? And, and from these great thinkers, um, people really revered Alice Hamilton. She was the first uh, woman to be appointed on the faculty of Harvard. Um, and she, she writes really eloquently about just kind of that recognition and what it meant for her. So really encourage people to look up Alice Hamilton. She was very cool. She lived to be 101 years old. So and that's at a time like that, at a time. Right. Like exactly. Also no relation to Alexander Hamilton. Right. <laughs> like people, some when we get little like children, third graders, they're like, "Oh my god, I love that musical!" And I'm like, "It's a good musical, but it's not in relation to Alice Hamilton." Right. Right. Mm -hmm. What major Chicago event took place at the same time as the 1893 Hull House Maps and Papers investigation? So we kind of gave you a little hint on this. 1893. Uh, you had already answered the question about the Chicago Fire, which is 1871. So you're like, so I'm glad nobody answered that. Nobody answered that answer. Uh, first Taste of Chicago, it's kind of hard to gauge when things first started since the Taste of Chicago actually continued. The first Taste of Chicago took place in uh, 1980. The Haymarket Massacre took place in uh, 1896 uh, and the World's Columbian Exposition was, um, yes, 1893. So, so that was the correct answer. Um, and one of the, the artists that Jane Addams had a uh, few portraits done uh, by Alice Kellogg Tyler uh, had a few of her pieces at the World's Columbian Exposition. She's actually one of the few women who had some of her pieces there. Um, so that yeah, was- And this is a photo of uh, the opening day, I believe, uh, parade on State Street. So this is um, on Madison actually looking north. So this is just one of my favorite photos that I've seen of the, uh, of the World's Fair because most of them are blueprints. Um, but I like the ones that you can actually see the masses of people that came out to view everything. This guy's hat. I like his hat. Yeah. <laughs> this is a portrait hung up in Jane Adams' bedroom. Who is the portrait of? So it is Mary Rosie Smith. Uh, I believe we talked a little bit about her relationship with Jane Adams. Her companion was an acceptable answer. Her girlfriend was an acceptable answer. Uh, her life partner was also an acceptable answer. But the, the true answer uh, is Mary Rose Smith. That was her full name. Uh, so she was a volunteer kindergartner uh, at the Hull House, as well as a main benefactor of the Hull House. Um, they spent many, much, a lot of, a lot of time together. Uh, they really deeply loved each other, uh, had a house together, and were even thinking about adopting a child together. Um, and it's, if you really want to learn more about the relationship, because it really goes a lot deeper than whatever I'm saying right now in this little tidbit, we have a gender and sexuality tour that sort of centers around their relationship um, and what it was like for them back then, like to not have that label or anything like that. Um, so it's a really, really cool piece if you want to like learn more about it, our gender and sexuality tours. Yeah. Awesome. All right, which artist created the official unofficial voting station, voting for all who legally can't at our museum in 2016? So Nicole uh, Maraquin, uh, Regina and Gloria, Aranjan Fuentes, those are all, again, collaborative artists uh, who have worked here at Hull House with their programs and our exhibitions. Ida B. Wells was an amazing suffragist, uh, anti-lynching act activist, uh, but was not the person who created this exhibit. Um, Ramhan C. Fuentes is a, I don't like the term, but that's what they call uh, it, a legal alien um, here in the United States. She has Korean descent and she does a lot of pieces when it comes to like who has the right to vote uh, and who doesn't have the right to vote. Uh, because a lot of people, believe it or not, despite living in this country uh, and being illegal 
resident, either if you're undocumented or documented, you are still impacted by the issues in this country. So she is was unable to vote for a very long time despite being here or how they say coming the right way. Um, so she was unable to vote because she was considered only a legal alien rather than a citizen. Um, so it just talks a lot about like who is unable to vote. So people who experience homelessness are unable to vote because you need an ID, you need an address to be able to vote. So despite the fact that they might be uh, citizens of the United States, they are unable to vote because we have they don't have their ID. In some states, it's different now. Uh, so that's pretty good. Um, people who are incarcerated can't vote, which is also something that's been changing a lot these days. Um, even though a lot of policies directly impact them, people who have been living here for for years, decades, are unable to vote because they are undocumented. Uh, and so young people, people under the age of 18 are unable to vote. So it's a lot of people who are unable to vote who are able to do that. Um, and actually my sister was just, she voted for the first time. She's 28 years old and she recently got her American citizenship. Uh, despite the fact that she's 28 years old and she's lived in this country for her whole life, she was brought here as a young girl about she was about two or three and she wasn't able to vote but now she was able to vote for the first time uh in this upcoming election so it was really cool to see that she was able to do that that's awesome we needed her vote see we did we did she's like how do i do this and i'm like um here you go here's all the information that i know <laughs> the expert the expertise right and this exhibit was disco themed right to kind of highlight um like marginalized voices um that were in the in the disco world back then is that right i wasn't here for the exhibit itself yeah it was a disco was sort of created by people who are in the marginalized communities mm -hmm. uh, as i feel like a lot of music is created by uh people who express themselves via art and music and poetry um and I, that makes sense right so it wasn't just like random that i was like oh yeah. disco and voting but no it was the same people who are disenfranchised by the vote are also creating these beautiful pieces and art and music and everything. Yeah, that we love to celebrate, right? We love <laughs> all of these things that people create. Let's give them, let's give them their rights, right? Um, all right, next question. Finish this quote. True peace is not merely the absence of war, it is the presence of justice, right? I saw someone write tension, which I understand why you would have written tension. Uh, there's actually a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, that is, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. Mm. Um, and it's very, very, very similar, but they're different, right? Um, but Jane Adams essentially said it first. Um, I believe she wrote it in a book. I'm not sure. I couldn't find which book she had written in it, but it is one of her most popular quotes. Mm -hmm. And it's often, this quote is misattributed to seemingly every important historical person. So you might see this uh, with different attributions. It's very hard to pinpoint the first person who said this. Um, but but we're this one here. specifically was written by Jane Adams. Yeah, and it's also the name of um, one of our current exhibits called mm -hmm. True Peace. Uh, it's based off of this quote, of course, and it highlights um, kind of the lineages between Jane Addams's peace activism and the peace activism that's going on today, specifically in Chicago. Uh, really cool, yeah. definitely check it out. You can see it in our virtual tour. You can. Yeah, and we'll give you all the links for that in just a couple slides. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> this one up. Who put? Um, who is hosting? <laughs> who is hosting this trivia game? Just to give you uh, a little bit of like a freebie, you know? Yeah. Eddie Chong, Nadia Moraga are two educators. Uh, Michael Ramirez, Ross Jordan. Uh, Michael Ramirez is the education manager. Ross Jordan is the uh, head curator. Um, and also the interim like head resident. He's like the head now, right? Yeah, I think he's the the interim um, executive director. There we go. That's I was like head resident. I'm in the. Right. Ross can correct us if we're misspeaking. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, Ross. I don't mean to speak for you. Um, Audrey Carolano, <laughs> Stefan Quemes, Casquano. That's us. Yay! Uh, Sister Paula Fox and Michelle Ross. I miss them. <laughs> they were yeah. VSA's visitors uh, service. What's the A stand for? Visitor service assistant. Assistance. <laughs> I think. Anyways, they were very near and dear to our heart. And Cesar has graduated. Michelle is doing her own thing. 
Mm -hmm. But this is just a little, you know, selfish. <laughs> These are two beautiful photos <laughs> that mm -hmm. I believe Sarah Lawson took, but I'm not, don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. um, but these are just both of us in action at some of our in-person family days, which we can't wait to get back to. We can't, but in the meantime, we're having our virtual family days, which have right. been a blast so far. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. But we have a bonus question. I thought it was but, over. Thought uh, it was over. <laughs> so please, um, if you want to participate, type your answer in the chat, either on Zoom or on Facebook, wherever you're tuning in from. Um, let's go. You will not win any points for this. You won't. No, you won't. no points. This is just for fun. Uh, Ellen Gates star pictured here ran for 19th Ward Alderman in 1916 on which party ticket? It's so cool because she went, she ran before women could even vote. Yeah, nationally. Mm -hmm. um, women could vote in Illinois at this point, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure. 1913 but, is when it. Yeah, right. Illinois was like one of the first um, mm -hmm. to grant women suffrage, but Ellen Gates star, she's just the coolest. I love her so much. Um, mm -hmm. Do we have any, any guesses? A few times. What did you say, Savan? He's been arrested a few times. Oh, okay. So Michael uh, has so relayed Facebook. to me that someone from Facebook wrote socialists. Oh, socialists, Aman, Signor. Yes. Aman, keep going. With yeah, Aman, good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's. I'll, I'll give five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Yay. Right. Socialist. She ran on the socialist ticket, which mm -hmm. I think is just so cool. Yeah, she ran for alderman of the 19th Ward, which is where Hull House was. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's it, everybody. We hope you enjoyed um please follow us on social media oops um you can find us on facebook jane adams hollis museum twitter at j a h h m and instagram of course at j a h h m 1889 and of course you can find out more information about group tours on our website at hullhousemuseum.org group tours and of course those uh free virtual tours that we had plugged earlier um those are also on our website it's really neat. Uh, there's a 360 degree uh, virtual imaging system that we use so you can walk through uh, the museum and see pretty much everything and even hear snippets uh, of information from um, a few of our staff members. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, oh, go ahead, Stefan. I was going to say thank you for joining us on our last family day of the year uh december it was a great i was it was an interesting year i will say it was an interesting year um and also happy jane adams day because that's on december 10th mm -hmm. so, yeah and that is the anniversary of when she won the nobel prize is that correct yes i believe that is correct so that's december 10th um yeah and just generally happy holidays uh wishing you all health and happiness um and please visit us again and visit us online come back for more virtual family days i think we'll be here for a couple more months virtually yes. happy holidays happy new year i hope the next one is better <laughs> yeah same if you have any questions please feel free to email us yeah definitely all right thanks all thanks y'all yeah bye bye bye